who who has claim to those earnings well it's divvied up evenly in shares and we have more people if you have to own more shares to have more ownership right so it's it's equal units it's like having dollars instead of saying that i own 30 percent of a farm you know like, you know if you have you have tangible you have things that you can have in units uh standard units <laughs> so so that means that you have retained earnings the owner investments are the issuance the the initial issuance of the pri of the stocks that's when money came into the business from the stocks being sold from the business not on the stock exchange but from the business itself and then the draws are dividends draws are kind of the sticker the messy situation in a corporation because in a corporation you can't just have one person say i want to draw some money out uh you have to have dividends which are going to be equally distributed to all the shares because you have to have all the shares being equal so you can't have like one partner drawing money out the way you might be able to have in a partnership you have to basically say if there's going to be a dividend everyone has to agree to it and you have to think about it. so that's what the messy side of the corporation is so pros and cons there all right so then if we go to the income statement the income statement fits into the balance sheet. Remember, the balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. How does the income statement fit into it? Because there's the net income. The net income is part of the equity section. We break it out on the balance sheet as a timing statement. So this is the primary tool that you'll need to like report taxes, for example, if you're in the United States, because the United States has an income tax, which taxes based on your performance when you earn the income. So that's gonna of course have the income up top, which we have generated primarily through uh, deposits that have come in through the bank feed, increase in the checking account, the other side going to these income accounts. And then the cost of goods sold would only be there if you are selling inventory, which we already talked about causes problems, inventory does, forcing us to deviate from like a cash-based system oftentimes. And then we've got all the expenses, which primarily, again, we have created through the decreases in uh, the checking account. The other side go into our various expenses, and we basically constructed our expense categories as we've we've had those ex as we've seen those expenses come through. We had other income and expenses down below, and then of course the bottom line is net income, fifty eight five five zero seventeen, which ties out to what's on the balance sheet here let's take a look at just some of the other reports just quickly i'm going to duplicate this and just take a quick look at some of the other reports uh, that are being generated as we as we do our bank feeds accounting drop down reports so uh we have our favorites up top all the reports financial analysis these are some snap these are kind of some fancy reports the snapshot the short-term cash flow i'll let you the manage the budget summary so i'll let you take a look on those uh on your on your own but let's go down here to starting with the financial reports we looked at the balance sheet uh we've got depreciation schedules which would be dependent upon whether or not you're going to be calculating depreciation in zero or not if you're in the united states like i say uh, you're going to have to do depreciation for taxes on a tax basis so you're going to have to put it into the tax software anyways that's why a lot of times in the united states you might just use the tax software as your subsidiary ledger for both tax depreciation and book depreciation if you don't have that obligation or you'd like to track your own depreciation uh in the software as well then then you can track then you can use that method disposal schedule fixed asset uh, reconciliation the income statement, the management report. Here's another statement of cash flow, uh, which is the direct method. So if I open this up in a new tab, let's do it, right click, open it up. Here's the other primary kind of financial statement report. Let's bring this from January uh, to December of 2022. December of 2022 uh that's november where's december december okay so so notice that the cash flow statement is trying to do is basically doing a performance report like the income statement but on a cash flow basis now note that if you're creating your financial statements directly from the bank feeds 
you're fairly close to a cache based system already although we talked about the fact that you still might have to deviate from a cache based system for things like uh well accounts receivable is a is an accrual thing or the fixed assets or a primary one so the whole idea of this accrual concept is the idea that if you have an income statement and you didn't do accrual things such as you paid $100,000 for a building in February. Well, when you try to compare January's performance on an income statement to February's performance on an income statement, if you had a 100,000 expense in February for building expense, then it would throw off your comparison because clearly you're not gonna use that building in February, you're really gonna use it for 30 years into the future. So you can see how distorted your income state would, would get from a performance standpoint. So the idea would be you can't do that because I can't compare my income statement reports. So I'm gonna put that on the balance sheet and then allocate it as we use the building. However, if I do that, then from a cash flow perspective, I don't really have a cash flow perspective anymore. And cash flow is important because cash flow is the lifeblood of the business. So to get the best of both worlds, then we can run our reports on an accrual based method and then have our have our statement of cash flows, which will give us that cash flow method as well. That's the general idea of it. So the operating section is basically kind of like the income statement on a cash basis. The investment activities, you can think of more broadly as just like investments in stocks and bonds, like investments in assets, fixed assets typically is what the 